Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of May 31st, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a powerful astrological time. This moment is one that provides a important turning point of sorts and energies are running very high, tensions are running high. I did touch a little bit last week on the lunar eclipse of this week and now we're gonna dive in a little bit more deeply. But I do want to say that it is this lunar eclipse happening around Friday that kicks off a rare extended eclipse season. Normally, eclipses happen in pairs, two weeks apart, and that opens up a two-week time frame where the ancients said that the veils between the worlds were especially thin. This allows us to recognize our larger spiritual lessons that much easier, to not get caught up in the physical manifestation of what is transpiring in our lives. However, this time we've got about a month of eclipse season. We're going to have three eclipses back to back to back. And it is this first eclipse happening this week that kicks off a new series of eclipses for the coming year and a half. We are going to have the south node in the sign of Sagittarius and the north node in the sign of Gemini. These are going to be the important eclipse points where we start navigating from the lessons that we've had towards responsibility and security and now towards an understanding of truth and how it is that we speak to each other, how it is that we convey information to each other. The thing is though, this particular lunar eclipse having to do with truth, given that it is in the sign of Sagittarius, well, Sagittarius is a subjective truth. It is a truth that is personal. It is this recognition that what uh, is justice to each of us may be different. What is spiritual truth, spiritual ethics, what it is that we believe to be our place in the world and how it is that our own ethics align us with that or not, how we judge ourselves for that. That is what this Sagittarian energy calls to our attention. And it's calling it with passion. It is calling it with some urgency. And that is because of Mars. Mars is moving into alignment, uh, what we call a square, with this lunar eclipse. And we can already see how it is that it is showing up for us uh, around the world. Certainly we're seeing it in the United States. But it is this Mars that is in the sign of Pisces now, and Pisces has to do with a few different things. It, it speaks to, yes, this spirit of oneness, this communion. It can speak to uh, things like viruses as well, but it is also pure emotion. And Mars here indicates strong emotion, but also where there may be sadness. Now, Neptune isn't too far away either. And that means that emotions are that much higher, but also that much more elusive, as is truth at this time. We have our convictions with Mars, but then we also have that sense of perhaps things not being clear as to the best way forward and as to what that truth is ultimately going to be that is going to guide us forward from here. What truth is it that we can hold on to that we can hang on to now, well, that may be harder to understand. It isn't helped by the fact that as we navigate just beyond this eclipse, Mars next week is gonna connect with Neptune, intensifying that sense of uncertainty, whether that is in terms of how well we are dealing with this time of our health uncertainties, but also with our emotions as well. And then we have across the sky from this lunar eclipse, well, we have the sun meeting a Venus retrograde. And of course, Venus has to do with our hearts and what we want and what we love. And I wonder with the sky, how clear that is, how straightforward that is and where it is that emotions may be manipulated now. 
Last week, I did invite you to be careful with this time, to be kind and gentle to yourself and to each other, being mindful of how high the energies can be, whether that is in terms of our interactions on a health level or whether that is in terms of our interactions on a more emotional level. It is now that if there ever was a time to be kind and gentle with each other and with ourselves, this certainly would be it. If there ever was a time to ground ourselves in truths that are rooted in love and wisdom and to commit to them more deeply, this certainly would be it. But I want to acknowledge that the uncertainty is high, the sadness is high, the emotions are running high. And all of this with the uncertainty of lack of clarity. Astrologers have known for a long time that 2020, 2021, 2022, these would be really big years. 2020 certainly for the collective, but we look at the early part of this decade in the context of what is happening for the United States. Well, there are powerful transits taking place to one of the most widely used charts to understand uh, the birth of this country. And I know that at least half, sometimes more of the people who watch me are based in the US as well. Thank you. Uh, they have been uh, dear supporters of mine that I appreciate so much. This eclipse, this lunar eclipse is happening right on top of the ascendant of the United States chart. And it is this lunar eclipse and the way in which it is speaking to other power players that is part of what is evoking such strong emotion there. The sense of what matters most, what matters first, and also the lack of clarity, not knowing what's real and what is. And then you add the fact, knowing on a deep level that this country is preparing for really big transits that are coming up in 2021 and 2022. I spoke about this in a recent interview I did with my friend Michael Barwick, and that is posted on my YouTube channel as well. I will link to it below. But it was during this interview that we spoke about the upcoming Saturn Uranus square, how that is going to be speaking with the US chart, the Pluto return of the US as well. There's a lot stirring within the soul of that country. Well, it is this eclipse now happening right on the ascendant of the U.S. chart. Well, this suggests a powerful time and a powerful beginning of sorts. The opening, the welcoming of these big transits that are happening, not just this year, but the lead up into 2021 with the more profound and lasting changes set to take place. There is another celestial phenomenon taking place right now that is also important, and that has to do with Mercury. Right around Tuesday, Mercury will enter shadow. And it's important to watch what happens in the first days after Mercury enters shadow, because this is where Mercury will return once we get to about a week into July. And it is going to be this larger Mercury retrograde season that is moving over the U.S. Jupiter and the U.S. Sun. In fact, it is the movement over the Sun, the fact that Mercury is going to station and just hang out so close to the Sun of the USA chart, and that happens in the later part of June. Well, all of that does suggest that sense of redefinement, that sense of clarity, that sense of looking at things again, that sense of needing to talk to each other, and that sense of new ideas that can come in now. Now, at least for this week, what is encouraging though, is that under the light of the lunar eclipse, with all its intensity, we are also going to have Mercury speaking in harmony with Uranus. Now, this is a type of conversation that astrologers call a sextile, and it is an energy that is one of delight, one of positive turnarounds, and one that can bring in new ideas, new epiphanies that shift energy in important ways. Now, happening in the sign of cancer for the collective, I do think that this is going to be a fresh perspective on home, 
a space where a whole lot of us are being asked to spend more time. And I also think with Uranus connected to technologies, this could bring technologies into more homes than there have been before, which is also encouraging. Now, this is going to be a more worldwide phenomenon that we may see at this time. But know that this is an important Mercury retrograde season and cycle. Yes, I focused for part of this horoscope on what is happening in the US chart. Powerful, no doubt. But these energies speak beyond that. They speak to our collective yearning for some truth, some understanding of justice when it feels so elusive under a sky like this. It speaks to our collective desire to feel safe and to feel at home for ourselves, for the people we love, but also for each other, to feel like there is a place that is our own, a land that is ours, to feel connected to the people that we consider ours. Well, expanding that definition so that we allow those connections to happen more, well, that may very well be part of the opportunity that presents itself to us before the week is out, but it is only the beginning. Yes, there is energy that is elusive, that may heighten fear, that may heighten misinformation. But there's also the promise now that if we are willing to sit, if we are willing to be, we may see things more clearly. We may see things more honestly, but also we may start to glimpse a more hopeful future in the midst of some very strong emotion now. Ultimately, with Sagittarian energy, truth is relative. And the more it is that we can affirm that, the more it is that we're able to listen to each other, to be with each other, but also open ourselves up to change in positive ways. Open ourselves up to evolve our own truth, and especially where it is that that truth aligns with higher principles of love and wisdom, that is when we will know we're on the right track. Venus is retrograde. It is allowing us and encouraging us to contemplate love more deeply. And are we bringing love to this moment? That is the great possibility now and the great opportunity now to claim our power to love and to find power within it. It is that Mars in Pisces that is heightening compassion if we will allow it, but it can also heighten fear both are alluring. The fear may be more addictive. However, the love is ultimately what brings authentic power. And the authentic power, once we tap into that, well, that is an energy that carries a momentum all its own, an energy that can only lift all of us higher. What I love about this week for us, well, it is that beautiful connection between Mercury and Uranus. It may be the saving grace. It is an energy of epiphany, of moving forward, of seeing clearly, and of elevating in some way. It is going to be part of an ongoing dance, though. This connection between Mercury and Uranus is going to be repeated a total of three times as part of this larger season as we move towards the end of July. And even though I will be here to talk about it every step of the way, it is now that we can tap into it, that we can take advantage of it. Where it is that personally we need to elevate our energy, where it is that personally we can see things with a fresh perspective, and where it is that we are invited to dig deeper and to find love, to find wisdom, and to appreciate truth rooted in these principles, well, it is from that place and the heightened compassion of Mars in Pisces now, well, it is ultimately from here and the ability to communicate these ideals that we help to lift the vibration of the entire planet. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. I have books 
right? I do have books. Prayers to the Sky is available wherever books are sold, the body and the cosmos as well. Um, I hope that you absolutely love them. The universe is wise and loving. The advanced copy sales are closed. Pre-orders, well, they'll begin at some point later on this summer, and I will let you know about that. But I do have a special class coming up. If you ordered the advanced copy, you have automatic enrollment. Uh, if not, you can purchase a class pass to that. And that is looking at the changing of the nodes with the North Node moving into the sign of Gemini, the South Node moving into the sign of Sagittarius, what that's gonna mean for the collective and what it will mean for you and your sign. Well, all of that is gonna be part of this class that you can learn more about it at synchronicityuniversity.com. And speaking of Synchronicity University, the summer school enrollment is now open. Once again, I am offering choose your own tuition uh, right up until the middle of June. And there are also a limited number of partial and full scholarships available. I know that right now it is a time of uncertainty for a lot of people. So I've tried to make my classes as accessible to as many people as possible. And so it is going to be over the course of summer school that we are going to look at Uranus part one and two, Neptune part one and two, really important big energies, as well as the follow up class to Mars. Earlier today, we did have our class on Mars. It went really well. I was so happy with it. And so were the participants. Thank you so much to everybody who joined us live. And of course, to those of you catching it on the dedicated Facebook group, on the replay, thank you. And so, yes, this will be part two, looking at Mars in aspect to planets and chart points. So we're going to have a lot of fun this summer learning more astrology. These classes are great for those of you, even if you are really new to astrology, because it does start with that beginning of signs and houses and builds from there for these two power players. And I hope that you absolutely love it. And finally, you can get my take on your unique birth chart with my partnership with Cosmogram. I am so excited about this. Cosmogram is this amazing company who approached me and in partnership with them, I have created computer generated reports where you enter your birth data and within hours you are emailed a PDF to your chart and an interpretation of that chart written by me. And this goes through each planet in your chart, looks at it by sign, looks at it by house, looks at the aspects, and tells you what I think about it uh, and my interpretation of it, especially for you. So please do have a look at that. Learn more at the link in the description below. And thank you. Thank you for being with me during this very rare and special time. And it really is very special times that we are living through. I know that I focused more on what is happening in the US. It is very much on the surface. Their chart is being activated in powerful ways now. And though I will continue to talk about it as we go along, know that the energies this week speak to all of us as a collective. This search for truth is universal. And there are times when, whether individually and times like this, collectively, we are coming to understand how subjective truth can be and we are searching for truth now. We're searching for facts where the Sagittarian energy asks us for the meaning of the information. It is Gemini now that is going to ask us to communicate more clearly and with each other, to see ourselves and others, to see all of us as twins essentially. That is the Gemini vibe. And that presents with it an incredible opportunity now for balance, whether we seek that balance within ourselves by balancing our own perspective and the emotional energy we bring to whether it is events in our lives or world events, or whether it is that we seek to find balance with each other. It is now that through mind, we can find genuine connection. That is great potential. And that is something to be genuinely hopeful about as I am now. Well, thank you again for watching and thank you for being here as part of affirming love and wisdom in the world, even in changing times like this. Thank you. It'll be a great week. Enjoy. <laughs>